Hello everyone, my name is Aldo Martinez. I'm a PhD student working with Professor Jeff Landin at the University of Ottawa. I'll talk to you about a device for the universal transformation of beam arrays. In linear optics, the modular transformation you can make is a unitary that takes you from an initial state to an output state. This unitary is characterized by being reversible and by preserving the inner product you are working with. So if you encode information in your initial state, this information is preserved under the unitary. So in general, what we do in optics is uh, we aim for a transformation and then we design and implement an experiment to perform it. Uh, what we are trying to do and also other groups is a platform where one can, where one can dial the unit chart that one wants and the system reconfigures each time to perform such transformation. So this type of reconfigurable device could be very versatile and powerful. It can allow you to study quantum systems and implement sampling experiments, interferometers, or quantum random work. It can be used also to implement quantum gates and therefore useful for quantum computing, or it can be used as a mode converter to, mode, to name a few applications. In recent years, there's been many papers um, showing the implementation of this type of quantum photonic circuits. They use a variety of methods like lithography, fantastic laser writing, and UV laser writing. A common platform is um, the one of the multi-port interferometer. So early work showed that a unitary transformation can be decomposed into a mesh of two mode beam splitters. The number of beam splitters that you require scales, scales quadratically with the dimension of the unitary you wanna make. So there is uh, in this paper, for example, um, they aim to make this type of meshes more robust to fabrication errors, where it still is hard to to, to perform in free space. However, there's been implementations in integrated optics. In this case, for example, they use six modes of light and they achieve reconfigurability by using thermal phase shifters. Another platform to perform a unitary transformation is the one of discrete Fourier transforms and phases. This is a recent proposal um, that tells you deterministically how to implement a given unitary of dimension n. So if n is even, you need uh, a linear number of discrete Fourier transforms and a linear number of phase masks to implement it. In order to, to achieve a discrete Fourier transform, you need to use a multimap web guide, inject light, and then let that light propagate for some distance, after which it will observe the discrete Fourier transform. This proposal has not been implemented yet. Another platform to make a unitary transformation is the one of a, a multiplane light converter. Here the idea is to use phases and Fourier transforms. So you apply phases in X space followed by case, uh, phases in K space. And in between there is a Fourier transform. So you will repeat that over and over. And uh, Morisor in this set of papers showed that that is enough to perform any you know, unitary transformation. And they also performed that experimentally by changing spatial modes. These are the results of their papers. So here, a three beam array passes by a multiplane light converter that acts as a multiplexer. So at the output, we have three different, so each of these uh, spots of the beam array is uh, mapped into a different spatial mode and then superimposed at the output. So this can be used in reverse as well and can be used for the multiplexing. Their implementation uses a spherical mirror that implements approximately a uh, Fourier transform. And then they use a reflective surface uh, capable of uh, changing the phases that it applies. So it can be a formal mirror or another type of modulator. For their work, used a multiplane-like system with seven planes to achieve a high dimensional mode sorter. So by using uh, only seven planes, they are able to sort uh, more than 200 modes of light. So they start off with a two-dimensional array of spots, and then each of these spots is mapped into a different mode in the Laguerre-Gauss basis. How to apply face masks? Um, so in this type of experiments, you need to apply face masks, and uh, you can use a deformable mirror, printed holograms, um, but like the most common Resource is using a spatial light modulator. That is a device with liquid crystals that can be reoriented and apply the different face masks that you require. So what we want to use is a one-dimensional beam array. 
So here you can picture uh, your array as a collection of channels in free space or as different web guides. So a photon can exist in one channel or the other or in a superposition of them. And uh, this is a nice degree of freedom because the transfer profile of these photons can be just Gaussian and therefore can be natural to many optical systems that already exist. And it can be extended to high dimensions easily just by adding more web guides or more channels in free space. Here we show the idea of our implementation. So instead of the multiplexing spatial modes, we want to implement a discrete unitary transformation for a one-dimensional array of beams. So our beam array is going to be along one dimension of the SLM, let's say x dimension. So each pixel corresponds to an amplitude along x. And then the y direction is used to perform the unitary. So the idea is to go between x and k uh, along y direction. So experimentally, one needs to implement something like this, a spatial light modulator and a mirror. So this mirror can be cured to approximate, um, to try to simulate a lens, or it can be flat and use diffraction to approximate a Fourier transform. The dimension of the spatial light modulator of the effective area are, um, are relatively small, 12 millimeters times 15, for example. And this makes this type of system challenging to design. So we decided to go for a two beam array first before we move to higher dimensions. But the idea is to use n beam array uh, after we prove that it can be done with a two beam array. So for a two beam array, the modular transformation is this unitary characterized by two parameters. One is the reflectivity R and the other is a phase in one of the ports. How do we design the phase masks that we require in the multiplane light system? Uh, there is no analytical uh, formula to obtain them. What we use and what people have used is a waveform matching algorithm that forces the input modes to match the output modes at each phase plane. We have developed um, our own code to perform uh, such, uh, such optimization. So in this simulation, an optical field is simulated using 100 points per SLM pixel. And these are the results for a beam splitter with reflectivity one third. So this is the intensity, the output intensity, and this is the output phase. This is the case of a 50-50 beam splitter. And uh, we also can use um, published code um, that does the similar thing in two dimensions. So here we plot again the intensity at different planes. So this is the case of a 50-50 beam splitter. And these are the phase masks that one requires to to put on the SLM. Experimentally, it looks like this. There is a diode laser coupled to a monomer fiber. Then we expand the beam with a telescope. And by using polarization optics and a beam, sp beam spacer, we create a two beam array. So the two beam array is reflected back and forth between a spatial light modulator and the flat mirror. So the spatial light modulator has these face masks to account for the fire reflections. And at the output, we need to make uh, some measurement. So here we show the intensity on a CCD camera uh, for different transformations. So here I'm varying the reflectivity of the beam splitter transformation. This is the case of a reflectivity of 0 0.34. This is the case of a 50-50 beam splitter. Then a reflectivity of 0 0.75. And finally, a completely reflective beam splitter that corresponds to swapping the two modes. So in order to quantify uh, how well we are doing, we need to actually uh, look at the amplitude and phases of the field at the output. And we plan to do that uh, when we go back to the lab. To wrap up, a uh, reconfigurable device that allows you to make uh, any unitary transformation is a very powerful device and can be used to study quantum information and to study quantum phenomena. The tools of free space propagation and face mask are quite powerful. And we use them to perform two most transformations. And we plan to extend this to high dimensional beam arrays. Finally, I'd like to thank my supervisor and the lab mates that have collaborated in this work. This is my email address and I'm happy to take questions. I'll join you after the live session. Thank you.